He's a consultant endocrinologist, Magna Centers and Fernandez Hospital, Hyderabad. He got a uh, list of awards like Shakuntla, Amir Chand and MS, MNC in Orien, Oriation Awards from ICMR New Delhi. Dr. J.S. Bajaj Oriation Award from National Academy of Me Medical Sciences New Delhi. Uh, Dr. A.R. Seth uh, Gold Medal from Endocrine, Endocrine Society of India. Thyroid Rising Star Oration from uh, Indian Thyroid Society. Uh, Young Investigator Award from RSS, DI and API and UPDA. Uh, he is a Best Referee and Best Article Award from Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. He peer reviewed uh, 225 publications, PubMed Index General, Generals. I welcome Dr. KVS Harikumar sir. Yes sir. Thank you sir. Good morning everybody and uh, thanks to IdeaCon for the invite. You have heard a lot about inject injectables since morning. So we will move from the injectable spectrum to a oral spectrum. Treating the trinity, pioneering optimal outcomes with the oral semaglutide. This is my financial disclosure and the topic will be covered under the following headings. First is a couple of slides about what trinity we are talking about, some evidence and what does Pioneer look at and some future studies concerning the molecule. So if you look at decoding the trinity, two sets of molecules have actually put these three things together. There is a CKD also is missing there. but. Definitely, if you look at the GLP-1 RS and SGLT-2 inhibitors have brought the diabetes, obesity, CKD and CVD all together because with one drug, you can actually achieve lot of benefits in all these spectrums put together. Initially, we were working in compartments of each other, but now there is lot of overlap. You need to know why it is beneficial in another segment, all those things. And it is important to understand the pathophysiology because most of these things coexist. I am sure you would see 50% of your patients who walk in with diabetes will have obesity, they will have dyslipidemia, some 30% will have CKD, 80% will have CAD. So there is whole host of data, whole host of patient groups falling together in this spectrum of people. And if you look at the pathophysiological links by and large it is the inflammatory stress oxidative stress and which culminates driven by both obesity driven by diabetes leading into the cvd diabetes so and so is equivalent considered as a cardiac e cardiac disease equivalent of past mi or cad so how do you address this trinity together is what most important you obviously look at lifestyle changes, you obviously look at glycemic, lipid, blood pressure management, weight management and what do the guidelines say. So all whole host of management options which you should consider in addressing this combination together. So we will look at the evidence looking at established guidelines, how they have proposed to manage this. I am sure nobody can read this but nevertheless this you have seen plenty of times. The issue is you look at what is the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. You look at the presence of CKD. You look at any history to suggest that you need to prevent the progression of this disease in a given individual. GLT2 inhibitors and GLP1 RS have been proven to be beneficial in across the board spectrum. And in all of them also, there is some difference as to what particular molecule which has been shown to be much benefit. Multifactorial approach, the fourth pillar all of us are familiar about ABC goals of diabetes, but the fourth pillar of about agents with cardiovascular and kidney benefit has started only in the last couple of years, not decades. ABC was there last couple of decades, but now you have in addition to your A1C, blood pressure and cholesterol control, you need to control using drugs which are going to reduce your cardiovascular events, which are going to reduce the progression of your chronic kidney disease. Translates into reduction in A1C, reduction in body weight, reduction in blood pressure, reduction in inflammatory markers and cardiovascular benefit. So you have a plenty of things what you are looking for with different molecules are given by a single molecule that is what these drugs look at and give you that option. And if you 
look at the spectrum of GLP-1 RS, it is by and large divided into a exendim based or a human GLP-1 based. Most of the available GLP-1 RS are actually injectable. You have only one oral GLP-1 R available that is the oral semaglutide. We will see why it, uh, why it can be. This is the first peptide which has gone across the gut barrier and still has good effects. So, it gives lot of motivation that you may actually get a insulin also sometime in the future because this has showed the way that you can actually push through your peptide in a from the gastric barrier. The pioneer is the one which is the acronym which stands for different spectrum of studies which looked at the oral semaglutide and the oral semaglutide it is co-formulated with what is known as the snack. That snack is the one which keeps it stable and prevents the hydrolysis in the gut enzymes and this 1 percent of semaglutide in the drug tablet is absorbed across the gastric epithelium and the snack facilitates this. So, people whoever wants to break the tablet, please do not break the tablet, you are not going to gain any advantage by doing it, it has to be taken in toto. Okay. So, this is a pioneer program which looked at different subset of diabetes patients, active comparator, placebo, cardiovascular event, all those things. So, different spectrum of patients and pioneer 2 is with SGLT2 inhibitors, 3 is with DPP4 inhibitors, 4 with GLP1 RS and 6 is looking at the cardiovascular safety. So, if you look at across the data of pioneer, the A1C reduction across be it a placebo comparator or active comparator, you have a significant improvement in A1C up to a tune of 1.5 percent. And if you look at the weight loss, because you are going to get a A1C reduction in addition to weight loss, so which is going to give you a further cumulative benefit to the patient, which is to the tune of another 5 kg. So, you are going to get reduced A1C, reduced weight, which will translate it into a compounding benefit to the patient, which translated possibly into some of the CV data and other benefits. The Pioneer 6 which looked at the CV safety or CV superiority of this. CV superiority was not described with the oral semaglutide, but it shows that it is at par with the placebo. There is no increase in the events and they are both comparable. The pioneer real India where some in the across the pioneer segments where the real world evidence in the Indian subset if you look at it, A1C 8.9 percent when they have started with the in, uh, drug and 90 percent of the patients achieved better control and 1 in 5 patients were started in first year of their diagnosis of diabetes and 1 in 2 patients had a cardiovascular related history. So, you are as per guidelines, as per the ideal conditions which the, pay, the drug has to be selected, it is being met. So, you would give the maximum benefit to the clinical spectrum. So, Oral semaglutide addresses risk factors beyond the A1C and weight. As I have said, because of their mechanism of action, you will reduce inflammation, reduced waist circumference, reduced in the lipid profile. Some of these things will translate into cumulative benefits which are accrued to the patient. So, reduction in waist circumference of about 4.7 centimeters by virtue of their mechanism of action, reduce in the calorie intake. 35 percent reduction in the energy intake and about 3 to 5 millimeters mercury of reduction in the systolic blood pressure, some improvement in the blood lipids and reduction in the vascular inflammation, all those things are the extra benefits which you would get with these drugs. So, after seeing that the background, trial data and mechanistic benefits and usage what happened in the India and across other outside world. The future course ahead for oral semaglutide, some of it I will tell you in couple of slides. When you compare the GLP-1 RA and SGLT2 inhibitors, both work complementary to each other as far as reducing your cardiovascular events, reducing your chronic kidney events, in addition to their glucose reduction, in addition to weight reduction. So, you have mechanistic benefits which are driven by both these molecules together. So, it makes 
sense that most of the recommendations do look at combining these two whenever you are aiming to treat diabetes, especially with a view of reducing your micro and macrovascular complications. So they address the residual risk, beta myocardial salvage, reduction in the risk of EGFR worsening, lower risk of end stage renal disease and more cardiovascular free life. Some of the ongoing trials with the semaglutide, the soul is the one which is looking at only the cardiovascular event with the oral semaglutide and SN plus is again primary prevention. These are the two oral ones. The flow has been published very recently. The other trials, the flow, step HF and stride were looking with the use of the injectable SEMA. The SELECT was the one which was published few months back which looked at only cardiovascular outcomes in obesity. Okay. And the flow was published just last week. It is injectable semaglutide in reducing your chronic kidney disease production. Both of them have shown significant superiority over the placebo, but both of them were concerning the injectable sema than when compared with the oral semas. Okay? So to conclude, GLP-1 RA-based therapy improves the trinity of cardio-renal metabolic syndrome. Oral GLP-1 is a novel breakthrough because till now we never got a peptide going across the gastric acid barrier. So it's a breakthrough as far as management of type 2 DM is concerned. Benefits extend to patients even without diabetes. A simple obesity. They are as of now approved drugs and now you have got evidence to say that they will reduce the cardiovascular events even in the obese patients. Superior benefits if you combine with the SGLT2 inhibitors because they both have complementary mechanisms of action and good option of oral semaglutide in patients with diabetes, obesity, CKD and cardiovascular disease.